Spring is finally here. It's a good day to go thrifting. On today's trip to the thrift store, I had to do a little digging, but I managed to find this little end table cabinet. It's in pretty rough shape. They had it priced at $29, but it was a discount day, so I got it for $25, which is still more than I'd want to pay for this if I was planning on restoring it and then trying to sell it at a profit. In this case, I'm buying it mainly because it'll make a good video. And I may keep it or I may end up selling it for whatever I can get for it. But a lot of people ask me how much I sell pieces for and basically how much money is in the business of restoring furniture and selling it. And really that depends on first how much you want to pay yourself an hour. And then it depends on how much this type of furniture sells for generally in your area. And in this case, there's not a whole lot of value in a single end table like this. If there was a pair, then there would be more value because people could use them as matching nightstands, which are always in high demand. And in this case, I probably had about eight hours into this piece by the time it was done. And I would think I could probably sell it for maybe on the high end, maybe 125, but that would probably even be difficult since I don't have a shop. So more realistically, if I wanted a quick sale, probably would be under $100. So you can do the math there as far as what I would be getting paid hourly after you subtract the amount I paid for it, $25. So that's just something to think about. I started by removing the doors, and once I had the doors off, I could remove this uh, weird shelf thing that was in here. And then I applied the stripper to the whole piece, except for the inside. It's very difficult and time consuming to refinish the inside of a cabinet, so I would only do it if it really needed it. and. Uh, if it was going to be worth it in the end. And in this case, it's not just due to the value of the piece. And once the stripper had been on long enough, I scraped it off with a scraper. And there wasn't a whole lot of finish on this. Whatever finish was left on it was pretty thin, so it came off easily. And once I scraped off most of the residue, I went over it with a dry piece of 4 aught steel wool, and this helps to catch any of the residue that's still on there. And then after that, I went over it with, again with steel wool, but this time with some mineral spirits to clean off anything that was left. The steel wool helps especially on curved pieces like the base here. Uh, where the scraper doesn't work as well. The inside did need some attention. Uh, I didn't refinish it, but it did have some, some kind of uh, material stuck to the bottom. So first I just tried spraying some household cleaner on it and tried to scrub it off. That didn't work too well. So eventually I just wet it down with some mineral spirits and took a utility knife blade and just tried to gently scrape off any of that stuff that was stuck to the bottom. And after it had dried from the stripping process, I did some sanding and the top was in the worst shape. The rest of it wasn't too bad. So on the top I used an orbital sander and started with 120 grit, then went to 150, and then 180, and then 220. And there was this ring on the top that was still there even after all that sanding. So I just tried going over it gently by hand with some sandpaper, just to see if I could get any more of it out, but I didn't want to sand too much 
because if you sand just in one spot too much like this, it can leave a light spot. So I just tried a little bit to get more of that ring out. And here I'm wetting it down with some naphtha after sanding and you can see it's the ring is still somewhat visible but after the stain is applied it'll probably be okay. And on the rest of the cabinet I just went over it by hand just with 220 grit. It didn't need any more than that. Uh, it was in pretty good shape and I just wanted to smooth out any of the grain that had been raised by the stripping process. One of the back legs had a uh, small chunk taken out of it so I filled that in with some of this epoxy wood filler and basically you just slice a piece off however much you think you'll need and it's a two-part system so you just knead it together until the two parts are mixed evenly and then just put it into your repair And it helps if you wet your finger a little bit when you're shaping it. It won't stick to the epoxy as much, and it's just easier to shape it that way. And then once it dried, I just sanded it lightly and went over it with stain later. Like a lot of mid-century furniture, the base on this piece is a lighter and cheaper wood than the walnut veneer that's on the rest of the cabinet. And, uh, and you'll see this a lot, especially on mid-century furniture. So that lighter wood has to be colored to match the walnut. And I'll do that later with some gel stain. But first I'm going to stain the rest of the piece and I'll just tape off the base so that the stain does not get on there because I don't want to seal that. I want it to be able to absorb the gel stain that I apply later. I'm using a Varathane Walnut Oil Stain on this and it may seem redundant to apply Walnut Stain to Walnut Veneer but I like doing it on pieces that are being refinished and especially when they've had some damage like this one has some spots on the top that I couldn't get out completely you'd really have to sand them out but it's a veneer so you can only sand so much or else you'll go through the veneer so the stain I find just helps to blend in imperfections and maybe hide them a little bit and just give the whole piece a more uniform look and I just applied the stain with a foam brush and I don't usually let it sit on the wood for very long. In this case, probably just a few seconds and then wipe off the excess. And here I'm applying the stain to the doors. Once the application of stain on the sides and the top had dried, then I moved on to the base. And for this I'm using a different stain. I'm using a gel stain. And I'm using a gel stain because this is pretty light wood on the base. And the gel stain sits on top of the wood more than a regular oil stain. And it's just easier to get a darker color on light wood like this. And it'll hide the grain more and since this isn't walnut grain because it's not walnut wood on the base uh, hiding it will help to give the illusion that it's walnut like the rest of the piece which is generally what they tried to do at the factory when they made these just cover the whole thing with a uniform color so that looked like the whole thing was made of walnut and in this case this gel stain I'm using is called candlelight 
and it's made by General Finishes. And again, I just apply it, let it sit for maybe a few seconds, and then wipe off the excess. And after this first coat had dried, I did go and apply a second coat just to darken it a little bit more. Once the stain had dried, then I applied the top coat, which in this case is a satin lacquer. And this is a deft satin lacquer. And you can spray on as many coats as you want. I usually spray more coats on the top than the rest just because it gets more use. So it'll have more protection. And here it is all finished. And here's that spot on the top, that ring. And you can see it's not very visible. Looks good to me. Thanks for watching.